Okay, colleagues, the next item of business is the debate on motion 5222 in the name of Ben McPherson on Social Security Special Rules for End of Life Bill UK legislation. I would invite members who wish to participate in the debate uh, to press their request to speak buttons. And I call on Ben McPherson to speak to move the motion. Uh, Minister, for around seven minutes, please. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. This legislative consent motion is in response to the UK Government's Social Security Special Rules for End of Life Bill. I appreciate that this debate was scheduled at short notice. This was due to the UK legislation being progressed rapidly. Given the extent uh, to which the UK Bill has been expedited and the upcoming parliamentary recess uh, for our Parliament, a legislative consent motion is needed to ensure that we align with the UK Government's approach. This is expected under the terms of the Scottish Government's uh, agency agreements with the Department for Work and Pensions. The UK Government's bill was introduced in the House of Lords on the 11th of May and serves to change the UK Government's current definition of terminal illness for the purposes of disability benefits administered by the Department for Work and Pensions. In the DWP system, Currently, those who are estimated to have six months or fewer to live due to terminal illness can have their disability benefit, benefit applications fast-tracked so they can start receiving their payments more quickly. The UK Government Bill will expand their definition of terminal ill to those who have fewer than 12 months to live rather than six months. The UK Government expects this change to result in a widening of fast-tracked access to disability benefits for terminally ill people. Disability living allowance, personal independence payment and attendance allowance are all affected by this UK Government Bill. Provision relating to disability benefits falls within devolved competence by virtue of the Scotland Act 2016 and the amendments that the 2016 Act made to the devolution settlement. Therefore, the UK Government Bill in question today relates to devolved matters, triggering the requirement for an LCM. Until we fully implement our Scottish replacements, disability living allowance, personal independence payment and attendance allowance are being delivered by DWP on behalf of Scottish Ministers under an agency agreement. And there is therefore a requirement for these benefits to be administered consistently across the UK until case transfer completes and our agency agreements with DWP cease. Of course, adult disability payment, which replaces disability living allowance and personal independence payment in Scotland, is being rolled out in stages and is currently available in six local authority areas. Another seven areas will be added in July for new applications, ahead of full national introduction at the end of August and the ongoing case transfer process. At the point of full rollout on the 29th of August, when adult disability payment is available nationally, this is an important point. Anyone in Scotland who becomes terminally ill while in receipt of PIP or DLA will have their entitlement automatically transferred to Social Security Scotland and will benefit from the Scottish definition of terminal, terminal illness, which I'll come on to shortly. Going back to the UK Government Bill, this will likely have limited impact on those currently in receipt of DLA or PIP in Scotland. It will impact on people in receipt of or applying for attendance allowance ahead of the introduction of our pension age disability payment, which will replace attendance allowance in due course. Encouragingly, the UK Government's Bill brings the new definition of terminal illness in the UK closer to the definition we have introduced for disability benefits here in Scotland. But the UK definition will still be based on a fixed time period with regards to life expectancy. This is in contrast to the Scottish Government's definition of terminal illness as part of the delivery of Scottish forms of assistance, including child disability payment as well as adult disability payment. And our definition is based on clinical judgment that doesn't include a time limit of, on life expectancy, meaning people approaching the end of their life are more easily able to have their applications 
processed quickly but with the Scottish definition. Deputy Presiding Officer, all of which I've, uh, considering all of, uh, that I have said so far, I consider a legislative consent motion to be the right course of action in order to maintain alignment with the UK Government's legislation as ex is expected under the terms of our agency agreements. Uh, and providing legislative consent is therefore the most pragmatic and appropriate course of action. And I therefore uh, move this motion in my name. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. I now call on Jeremy Balfour for uh, up to six minutes. Mr Balfour. Uh, thank you, Deputy Vice Officer. It feels a bit like deja vu, um, having had the, a similar uh, debate uh, on a different issue, but around social security uh, last week. Um, last week, uh, the Minister felt I was maybe slightly partisan in my comments, so I will try to be slightly more constructive uh, this week. Um, however, it is worth pointing out, particularly around Clause 1 of the bill going through Westminster at the moment, is that the reason we are having to debate this for DLA, PIP and attendance allowance is because there has been a delay in implementing ADP and other Scottish benefits here in Scotland. Minister. Thank you, Deputy President Officer, and thank Mr Belfer for taking the intervention. Just on that uh, issue that he mentioned, does he accept that the devolution of Social Security benefits is a joint programme of work between the Scottish Government and the UK Government, and the delay on the delivery of some of our devolved benefits has been because both governments had to reprioritise during the pandemic period? Jeremy Belfer. Um, I, I do accept the pandemic has had a factor, an important factor in regard to the delay. But I think even before the pandemic, um, there were statements in this chamber to say that these benefits were going to be delayed anyway. So um, I, I do think I, I simply point out as a factual comment. Uh, the second interesting point, I think, for me, is the UK government do seem to be able to bring forward legislation fairly, fairly speedily when it is required. And I do wonder why it takes the Scottish Government quite so long. And certainly in the debate last week, um, the Minister indicated that there simply wasn't time for a bill to be brought forward in this Parliament. But yet, that doesn't seem to be the case in Westminster. And I do think we have to look at the time that these emergency types of bills do require, and can we do it quicker in this Parliament? Uh, the, my third uh, gentle uh, point uh, to the Minister uh, for the record, is that, with due respect, in regard to the uh, definition of terminal illness here in Scotland, it is not a Scottish Government definition. It was a definition uh, brought forward by this Parliament, and if I may claim credit, it was my amendment that brought it forward, and it was agreed by unanimously by the whole Parliament. So I do appreciate the Scottish Government are now introducing it and taking it forward, but the definition, I think, can be owned by all five parties and by all MSPs that were in this Parliament last time. If I can be uh, a wee bit more constructive, perhaps, in my final couple of remarks, uh, Deputy President Officer, I think it's been really helpful for the Minister to be able to define exactly where people apply if they sadly get a terminal illness definition post-August. Um, I suppose my concern is, is how do we get this information out from this chamber to those that need it? Um, either within CEB, advice shops, and the other third sector, um, and also just generally within the Scottish public's understanding that we do have a new definition, that there is a faster way to do it, and that you can get both highest uh, care and higher mobility quicker if you go through that procedure. And I would be interested if the Minister could um, perhaps in his closing remarks, just say, is there any advertising going to take place over the summer? Um, and if so, how will that happen? Um, we on this bench, uh, come decision time, will be voting for this. We think it's a positive step forward by the UK government. And I do hope it will get the support of every member within the chamber. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr Balfour. I now call on Pam Duncan-Glancy for up to five minutes. Ms Duncan-Glancy. 
Uh, thank you, Deputy President Officer. And let me start with the substance of the motion and the impact on people. This is about lives and terminal illness, possibly the time when we need our governments to be the most sensitive and responsive. And so for the, this reason, I and we on these benches welcome the move to extend the period in which a person who is terminally ill can qualify for special rules for terminal illness exceptions. And let me also say that I agree with the Minister that these matters do constitute legislation in which this Parliament has competence. In fact, in Scotland, as has been said, Social Security Scotland has its own special rules for terminal illness, under which there is no qualifying period. A policy designed to ensure people are provided with the support they need when they need it. A policy I commend the Scottish Government for having and for the diversion from UK Government policy in this regard. But I'm afraid I am also, again, a little disappointed. Firstly, because the people in Scotland are not yet feeling the full benefits of social security, devolved social security. Not because we need more power in that area, but because the Scottish Government is still letting people down by failing to manage the powers we already have. The Parliament passed social security legislation in 2018, yet over four years later, only a handful of local authorities have opened applications for the benefits. New applications won't be available to everyone in Scotland until at least the 29th of August. Full transfer of those currently on PIP over to ADP is not expected until 2025. 313,620 people on PIP have been left at the hands of the DWP, facing delay after delay as a result. Those people have been led I, I will. Minister. Thank, thank you, Deputy President Officer. I appreciate Pam Duncan Glancy taking the intervention. I just uh, pose a, a, in a constructive spirit the question to her again, which I have done before, which is you know, we all want to, to move to implementation of these benefits as quickly as possible and full case transfer. But what, what are the Labour Party's suggestions within the budget constraints of the Parliament and the, 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 the technical and human challenge of undertaking? These, these exercises in execution of government policy, what, what would the Labour Party have done differently to have done things quicker? Because we are going as quickly as we can, and I'm not hearing any constructive suggestions of how we could have done this quicker or could do this quicker in the future. Pam Duncan I, I, I thank the Minister for that intervention. And it's, it's possibly the first time I've heard the point about the budget in relation to pace. Um, which, which is interesting, although I think there are a number of things we could do differently in terms of the administration. I'd also suggest that we need to work closer together with other parliaments and other, and, and, uh, in the UK. And the, the, the fact that we have a, a UK government who didn't consider that a legislative consent motion was needed and a Scottish, parliament who, a Scottish government who did, um, and, and we support this motion, we will support this motion, as, as my colleagues across there have already said too, um, shows that there is significant f confusion. But yet still, those people are still being led up a hill and left waiting for years and years and now being told to make, wait for more for substantial change. The same is true of child disability payment, despite new applications being fully operational here. Safe and secure transfer won't happen until 2023. And the SNP Green Government haven't set out a timetable for attendance allowance. In the meantime, it's no wonder there's disagreement between the governments on what they need consent for, because they've been incapable of working together at pace, and this is the point I'd put to the Minister. We need to work at pace, work together, but instead they've created a confused system where we've devolved powers to Scotland, the Scottish Government have sent some back, asked the DWP to take care of others, and chosen a few to make some progress on. So it's clear it's a messy arrangement and it's not helping anyone. So frankly, it seems to me that nobody has a clue, and it's the Scottish people who are paying the price. How on earth can they expect people in Scotland to navigate this if they can't? So nonetheless, President Officer, we will support the motion today, but I stress that I'd far prefer to spend parliamentary time on social security legislation that would fundamentally and materially improve lives of the people of Scotland, rather than having to debate constitutional intricacies caused by delays and confusion, leaving people without the support they need. It's not good enough that neither government can get this right. This is the second time in a week that we face the same type of motion and the same constitutional tug of war because neither government is able to establish who has responsibility for what. So I recognise in closing that the policy and ideological differences between the SNP government here in Holyrood and the Tory government in Westminster. But while Social Security remains a shared responsibility, it is of the utmost importance that, you talk to one, that governments talk to one another, engage with each other and stop wasting time on disagreements about it. That's the best chance we have of getting things right and doing it quickly for the people of Scotland. Thank you. Thank you, Ms Duncan Glancy. I now call on the Minister to wind up for around about four minutes, Minister. 
Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, and I am grateful to members across the Chamber for their, their time and contributions to the debate. Um, while the Scottish Government has taken uh, a very different approach uh, to the UK Government's definition of terminal illness, as decided by the Scottish Parliament, um, this uh, UK Government Bill does represent a, a positive change that will benefit those applying for disability benefits administered by the DWP who are, who are terminally ill. And um, that is why I am requesting this legislative consent motion. Um, it is required in order for the UK Government to make changes to the definition of terminal illness in Scotland. And just as a point of clarity uh, to Pam Duncan Glancy, uh, there is agreement between the Scottish Government and the UK Government on this legislative consent motion. It is a different situation uh, to, to the, the, the last legislative consent motion we, we considered together. In fact, the UK Government have formally requested this legislative consent motion that we are, we are considering today. Um, I, I will, yes. Uh, Pam Duncan Lansi. Um, I thank the Minister for taking the intervention and thank you for that clarity. I appreciate I, I, I do really appreciate that. The confusion that has that has resulted though in this and last week is is because of such a confused situation that we're facing. And it really is incumbent on all of us to try and work together to make sure that we do the best we can to roll out social security payments in Scotland as quickly as possible. Minister. I would agree in that spirit, and certainly that is how I engage with uh, UK DWP ministers and Scotland office ministers in this process. Um, in terms of uh, something that Mr Balfour raised around, around process, the only alternative to a legislative consent motion would have been to introduce uh, equivalent Scottish primary legislation. But to take this approach, we would need to have the legisl legislation in place at the same time as the UK bill, which was only introduced seven weeks ago. Uh, to, to make sure it comes into, into force at the same time. And given the extent to which the bill at UK level has been expedited, this would have been extremely challenging given the other pressures on, on this Parliament's uh, legislative programme. And without parliamentary approval for this legislative consent motion that we're considering today, uh, those in receipt of applying for DWP disability benefits in Scotland would not be able to take advantage of the widening uh, of the terminal illness definition. So um, I appreciate the point, but I think... Uh, uh, th th what we're doing today is the, the most practical uh, process in, in the circumstances. Just to um, touch on the point that, that Pam Duncan Glancy made around speed, uh, just for clarity, I was not uh, in any way insinuating that, that budget was uh, a, a factor in, in, in the process of delivering either the rolling out of new benefits, uh, devolved Scottish benefits, or the case transfer process. Um, we, we as, as a member of the, the, the Social Justice and Social Security Committee, Pam Duncan Glance will be aware that Social Security Scotland have made very clear that we could not have gone faster in this process and that in order to deliver safe and secure delivery and uh, benefits in the way that have been designed with those with lived experience and with all the uh, stakeholder engagement and expert and independent advice into the process, we have done this at, at, at a strong pace in order to deliver a high quality service uh, and a better service as we continue to undertake case transfer and of course introduce um, in, of course introduce seven benefits that are not available elsewhere in the UK and that, that has been a significant improvement. Um, just also briefly, Mr Balfour raised a really important point around awareness. When we deliver new benefits, including through the phases of adult disability payment, we, of course, engage with local authorities and stakeholders through our local delivery teams to raise awareness. But actually, all of us as MSPs can play a really positive role in that. And I will be writing to all MSPs and Scottish MPs uh, in the coming days to encourage all of us to do what we can through the summer recess to make sure we raise awareness of what's available for people and for them to, to apply. Of course, the government does that on an ongoing basis and will continue to do it as proactively as we can but we can all make a difference here and we should do it together. Uh, Presiding officer, in conclusion, it is important that those who are terminally ill in Scotland benefit from the change that the UK Government's definition of terminal illness uh, will create. This includes those in receipt of attendance allowance and those adults who will apply for DWP benefits uh, in the short time be between the UK Government bill coming into force and the end of August when adult disability is introduced nationally. Uh, the legislative consent motion before us today will ensure the continued delivery of UK government benefits uh, on our behalf whilst we continue the safe and secure, secure transfer of people to the respective forms of Scottish assistance. Um, so I, I thank uh, Parliament um, for 
considering this matter today and look forward to uh, working with colleagues as we continue uh, to support people who are uh, receiving disability assistance in Scotland and to work with colleagues across the summer in order to make sure that we are raising awareness of what is available to support people uh, and I hope Parliament will back this motion in my name and this legislative consent motion. Thank you, President Officer. Thank you very much indeed, uh, Minister. That concludes the debate on Social Security Special Rules for End of Life Bill UK legislation. It is now time uh, to move on to the next item of business. Um,